Hey everyone, and welcome to today's episode of the vlog. So today we're back on the caddy as usual, trying to get this thing started. So there's several things that we need to do, and rather than go for it now, let's just get on and uh, see if we can get this van uh, running again. Back on the old caddy. Okay, today we're going to be doing something slightly different. We are going to check the compression because I can't understand why this engine is not starting. We've also got a leak. You can see it's kind of wet. There's a fuel come spurting out and I think it could be because this injector is faulty, but that return shouldn't be squirting fuel out. So it's almost like there's a little pinhole somewhere, which is a real pain because that's brand new and that shouldn't happen as well. So I'm going to get the all the um, glow plugs out and then we're going to test the uh, compression on this to see what what's happening yes let's do that all right so looking at the Volkswagen manual for my car this engine we should see a bar of 25 to 31 that's new the wear limit is 19 so anything between 31 and 19 is acceptable with a tolerance a difference or permissible difference of about five bar hopefully you can see that okay let's go and see what the car is showing we've done the first cylinder so cylinder one done and we have 25 25 bar so right on the button there we are good right let's test the others now cylinder two is around 22 so we're okay just Okay, cylinder number three is uh, 24. Okay, so within limits. Now for the final one. Okay, and cylinder number four, we have 24. So all four are within tolerance, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want to see. And that's good news. It means we got a good engine. At least I think so. Right, so we've just disconnected the injectors, loosened the fuel pipes, etc. Because these two we're going to take out. Uh, this is the one that we suspect is no good. Um, and I've also discovered that this clamp is broken on that side there. So I have to replace that, otherwise we can't secure this in place, which is the reason why that one's loose. In fact, I reckon, there you go, look at that. I was gonna say, I reckon I can pull that out. And sure enough, we did. We managed to pull that out. Mm. Yeah, that injector's toast. We got a new one, fortunately. But what we don't have is a new clamp. So we need a new clamp. I wonder if that one will do the same. I reckon that one will come out as well by hand. Yeah, there we go. No clamps required. If you're wondering why they came out so easy, it's because after use, when you basically, when it goes through various heat cycles, these just get rusted into place. That's exactly what happens to them. Okay. So that's out. Give them a bit of a clean up, and then we'll um, try again. But we, we can't do anything because I've got to wait for this clamp to arrive. See it? It's broken. I've got one on order. Should be here today or tomorrow. I really hope it comes today or tomorrow because I don't want this to roll on for another week. But without those, this engine ain't starting. So, um, right. It's going to be a couple of minutes for you, but for me, it's whatever length of time it takes. In the meantime, I think I might just put that door on while I'm waiting. And again, I'll do that off camera because you see me take it off and fitting is the reverse. Is the reverse. So I'm gonna do that. Okay, so we have fitted the door. The new door is in. As you can see, works just fine. Absolutely fine. The only thing, this lock is slightly higher than the existing one, but do you know what? We'll get that fixed. But the door opens, closed by design, perfect. So we're good there. Now we're gonna fit the other injector because the bits have arrived. So this is our new injector. 
and here is our new clamp so here we go new clamp look at that lovely so we're going to get that fitted along with one of the existing injectors um, and then um, that's the faulty one we know that it's all clean on the bottom there this is an existing one that was in there then we need to cold these all up because you have to cold the injectors so that the ECU knows how much fuel to release from each injector so we're going to tell the ECU where each injector is and then we'll put that in place but the first thing we need to do is get the new injectors in so enough talk let's get that done So now we've got the injectors in, what we've got to do now is we've got to tell the car the sequence in. So what we need to do is you go into um, OBD11, um, we're going to be using for this. So we go into engine module and then we go into advanced identification. Actually, not advanced identification, sorry, let's get rid of that. So we go into adaption, that's what we go into. And then what we have to do is tell it the code for each of the injectors. So we start off with injector one, so we've got a new one in there. We've got a new code to put in, because this code is wrong. The car needs to know that, so that it can adjust the fuel flow based on the age of the injector. Okay, so that's the reason why you would do that. So if you fitted a new injector, you can basically put the code in, and then you can get the car to literally adjust the fuel flow. Now there are some other measures that you can use to see what the current fuel flow is, and it is a bit of a dark art, but this is how you set the injectors. So if you put a new set of injectors in, the car needs to know that, and then you can then adjust it accordingly. Now our injectors are in different order, which means that I need to tell the car that because it may have pre-adjusted that based on its previous running. So we'll tell it that, and then it will um, will then attempt to do a start. So I'll do that off camera, because all basically all you do is you click on the edit button, you type the new value in. Now, a lot of the values will come, it needs to have a seven digit code. So if you get a injector and it's only got a six digit, you have to add a zero at the end to give you your seventh digit. Okay, so that's the um, key thing that you need to do. But you just type the code in, click on done, then the car sends that signal to the ECU and then the ECU knows how to drive those um, injectors. So we'll do that off camera and then we'll come back. Right, so codes are now put in. We now are going to uh, attempt to start the van again. So let's... Uh, Let's try that and see how we get on this time. All right, so you saw that happened there. We do now, I just ran um, VCDS on it. We've got a new code that we need to investigate. Um, that new code is going, basically it's complaining, it's still complaining about injector one. But what it's saying about injector one now is that it doesn't have enough power. Okay, so it's saying it's still an open circuit, which means that doing some investigation on that code means that um, we're gonna have to take the ECU apart because we need to now check the wiring on there because two injectors having the same fault coincidental i don't think so 
so we need to um, do a bit of further investigation also there was quite a bit of smoke did you see that so this engine is okay I know it's okay so I'm suspecting the other injectors and if that's the case that's going to be a very expensive uh, repair bill to sort those out but we can do a fuel flow on those injectors as well but we do need the van to run for that but I'm just worried that we're going to get another smoke fill environment which kind of then makes you think was there a problem with that engine in the first place or was it just injectors oh this van it's going to be the death of me but anyway uh, we're going to continue that's what we're going to do we're going to continue uh, so we need to take off the scuttle panel well, we're going to do that in the next episode all right so we've got something to work with now and, and although this episode probably a bit short the shorter than my normal episode trust me i've been working on this van solid for the whole weekend so uh, the fact that we've got what we've got a code we can now work with that so i'm going to strip out the ecu which is underneath that scuttle panel and I'll be testing the wiring and seeing if we can find our error there. Or it could be just a corroded connection, which happens on those vans. So um, I will take that further and we'll take a look. Like I said, I'm sparing you a lot of the detail because I know that interest in the van has massively waned off looking at the numbers and the stats for the actual the channel. So we need to get this van resolved and trust me we are close but we need to just get this issue sorted and as you saw there was a bit of some lot of smoke actually um so that could be because of the low power setting but if it's the other injectors then we're gonna have to replace those so all be it anyway don't forget to subscribe down below if you're a casual viewer click on the bell notification and we'll see you next week have a good one